uh, Mr. Secretary, focused largely on nuclear weapons, the stockpile, things of that nature. But I know energy production does fall under under that as well. What what do you tell people now in terms of how they should be thinking and how we should be thinking about energy production, particularly given we produce 13 million barrels of oil a day? Well, first of all, of course, at the Department of Energy, we spend a lot of time uh, on the longer term issue of the energy transition uh, that is uh, going to low carbon. And we should not uh, forget that that longer term trend is also something uh, that can be influencing how people are looking at the extreme volatility that we've seen uh, in the last few days. Now, obviously, uh, the last few days have been this clash between both uh, a drop in demand uh, through because of the coronavirus, uh, together with, uh, frankly, a glut in the oil market and the competition between Saudi Arabia and Russia uh, for market share. Uh, when, of course, in reality, uh, the real issue in terms of the oil supply is what you've already alluded to, the United States uh, being up to and maybe even a bit over 13 million barrels a day. So that's really been an enormous change in the oil markets uh, over the last several years. Now, a number of people who follow these markets closely uh, have posited the theory that it is uh, Putin who wants to put the shale players out of business, so to speak, certainly wants to pressure the industry here in the U.S. Do you buy that line? Well, I can't rule it out for sure, but we should note the history that uh, we have had some uh, pretty big fluctuations uh, over the last several years with prices going lower, and frankly, it led to a dramatic uh, improvement in the in the cost structures of, of the industry. Uh, frankly, the shale production uh, has just continued to go up. Now, I'm not saying that in this case we won't see some shakeout, particularly as we all know some of the smaller players uh, with carrying very, very big debt burdens. But, you know, I think the, the big majors have moved in here. Uh, they, have, uh, they have their own pretty deep pockets and their own way of hedging uh, future prices. So, uh, I, I wouldn't overreact to that, uh, although, again, that may be the plan. Uh, try it again. It didn't work the first time. Uh, we'll see what happens now. Are you saying, Mr. Secretary, that oil going from what, the high 50s, low 60s, just since the beginning of the year, all the way down to the low 30s, isn't going to create some sort of broader damage and pain in the U.S. energy industry? No, I certainly think that there will be some of that, as I said, especially with some of the smaller producers. But, but again, we've, we've run this, uh, this play before. Uh, and, uh, and the reality is the, uh, the shale producers uh, uh, had tremendous efficiencies that came in when the price went down. And so the reality, the reality is that the production, uh, with oil prices going up and down, uh, oil production in the United States has, has continued to go up. Uh, now, as we look uh, to the coronavirus uh, and the demand side, uh, we don't know how this is going to play out yet. And I have to say, uh, I'm a little bit more on probably what you'd call the pessimistic side, that uh, it's going to be quite a while uh, before this uh, virus is, is under control. And uh, that will continue to have uh, demand side implications, uh, both directly in terms of consumer use, uh, but also in things like disruption of supply chains uh, for our manufacturing uh, uh, industries. So I, I think this demand shock... Uh, uh, again, we can't. We, we can never be overly confident, but but I'm afraid I, I see this running for for quite some time. About half an hour ago, the U.S. said it would postpone uh, sale from the SPR. Uh, I wonder if that's material, and I wonder what your view is uh, impact on employment in states like Texas and North Dakota. Well, first of all, I have to say I have uh, always been opposed to the dramatic uh, sale of the petroleum reserve. I think it's been very, very short-sighted. Uh, I think it's been based upon a complete misunderstanding of what, uh, of what energy security and energy independence uh, are. Nevertheless, uh, it is the law right now uh, to sell roughly half of the remaining petroleum reserve. Uh, this sure isn't the time to put extra, mo extra oil on the market. So I do hope that there is a reconsideration of this uh, and a substantial delay, or frankly, in my uh, opinion, uh, even better, uh, a reversal of this idea of lowering the petroleum reserve and using it as a piggy bank to pay for all kinds of issues that are not energy security connected.